Good day everyone. Today I'm just going to do a quick little thing on current. What is it and how do we test it? I did one on voltage so now I'm going to do one on current. So current in measured in amps is the amount of electricity coming through a wire. If you want to try think of it in a certain way, think almost like a water pipe. Voltage is the size of the pipe. How much water can come through at a time, that would be voltage in your wire. Amperage is the flow. How fast is that water moving? How fast is the current moving, the, the electrical current? Then you'd have power, which is your watts, which is you multiply the two to get power. So then that would be, okay, what am I getting at the end? With this, think of it as a pipe and you want water in a pail, same thing as electricity to a device. It would be size of the pipe and the amount of water coming through together equal how much comes out at the end. Same thing for electricity. Same concept. Where power is how much you're getting in the end, voltage and current is what it takes to get the power. So what combination of the two are you using? So for voltage, I mentioned how you can spot test anywhere, ground, hit a bunch of spots. Current is completely different. And unless you know what you're doing, I, I don't recommend that you, you, you test for it. Unless, uh, like I'll show in a bit here, using uh, uh, where you actually clamp style to check for it. Quite easy then, but most people don't, don't have a clamp style meter. So if we want to check for current here, I'll just give you a quick look on... There's the, uh, so you can go back, there's your colors and the formula. You can go back and pause that if you ever need it. So now, on a, for current, what you have to do, you can't just touch two spots, because you're creating, if, if current is going, your path is one way, and you touch two spots, you're creating a second path. So now you're basically jumpering out the device you're trying to test, so you can't check for current that way it has to be in line so you have to let's say as an example what I have here is I have a heater that I'm gonna turn on <clears throat> and we're gonna see how much current it draws so if I was gonna test that without a clamp style <clears throat> what I would have to do here I opened up the plug I'm sorry the switch so what I would so red is and you can see I have right here uh, the switch is operating the top half of the plug. It's a split plug. You can see in an earlier video if you want to see how I wired that. But the switch, I would have to take one of those leads off and then take the leads from your meter and go one to where you were and one to the wire, meaning that you're completing that circuit through the meter itself. Definitely something that if you don't know what you're doing, I highly recommend you don't even attempt it. Don't, don't even put it as plausible. <clears throat> so, because right, right off the bat, you got to open up a device, take it apart, and complete a circuit within it. So now, so the other way, which a regular homeowner can do to some extent, you don't want to open up wires, but you can in your panel to check and see off of a breaker how much uh, a, a whole circuit is drawing. Why is it overheating? Why is my breaker tripping? Am I drawing too much or is the breaker faulty kind of thing as a test? So here you'll have a clamp style. So for this example, I just opened up the wires here, which obviously you wouldn't have. The only spot you'd have to go at is maybe having to clamp onto a, inside, a, pulling out a plug and clamping onto a wire. Um, even with that though, you have to be careful. This comes with two leads. If you look, there's only two, and I don't know if you can read that or not. Let me see if I can get that close enough, or maybe not. But, okay, here's your common, but for the red, it even says right on it, voltage and resistance. It doesn't say amperage. It's not, it has to be a separate fused connection. So you cannot put the leads here and check for amperage. You have to use the, the, the clamp only on this one. So, what we're going to do is go to amps. This heater, little space heater, it says on the bottom of it 1500. <clears throat> excuse me, 1500 watts. So watts, if you divide it by now the, the uh, voltage, which is 110, that gets you about 13 and a half amps is what it's saying it's going to draw. So let's see. 
So we'll put this around the hot. Come on. And then, there we go, use the ground wire to help steady it. We'll turn the switch on. So now our heater's on, there's a low and a high. So I hope you can see it, I think you can. It's at 7.3 amps. Now keep in mind, this is a circuit. So if we check our neutral, what are we going to get there? It's not using it all, it's, it's a circuit. So, 7.3 amps. So keep that in mind, that's why your neutral is hot as well when a device is on. Okay, so now if we turn this to high, it said 13 and a half. 1500 watts we're getting 11.8 so if you take 11.8 and you times it by 110 our voltage so we're actually pulling 1298 in, in for power right now so it's 1298 watts or say 1300 so it says 1500 that must be what maybe what it's rated for so it's actually pulling 1300 right now so we're at 11.8 amps which is quite high, that's almost a full circuit. Really, uh, resistive loads, heating, uh, definitely draw way more than anything else in your home. Motors are high too, but uh, resistive circuits are quite common. You have a heater, uh, you have a toaster, you have anything that heats up, definitely draws much higher current, and this is proof of it right here. So if we turn it off, goes back down to zero, Twelve point nine. So hopefully that helps you understand current and what you can test for and where you can't. Because by opening it up and trying to, I, I don't want to see someone that isn't qualified doing that. You're definitely a, a high, a good chance of getting hurt, and I don't want to see that. So I don't want to hear about that. So but with a clamp style, that's how you check it. But that sort of tells you what it is and the difference. And you have the formula, uh, the, the piece of Ohm's law, to actually uh, apply it. So now you can check and say, check and see, and say, okay, well, if this is 1,500 watts, how many amps is that? You can now do the do the math on it. Devices always used to have amps on it, and now this last like 10, 15 years, even a little bit more, everything comes with a power rating. Everything says how many watts something is. So if you want to know what current it's going to draw you have to do the calculation. So there you go. Hopefully that helped. And uh, we'll see you on the other, on the next one. Throw a subscribe if it was uh, helpful at all.